Okay, hello everyone. So um, <clears throat> I'm Dominique Blouin, a research engineer working at the Telecom Paris Tech School in Paris. And this is joint work with uh, Ankitsa Varisic, uh, working at the uh, University Nova in Lisbon. And just to give a quick story uh, of, uh, of this work is basically Ankitsa is working a lot on uh, usability evaluation of domain specific languages. And where I have been working on uh, developing a requirements engineering language for embedded systems. And when, when I developed this language, I had planned actually that it was kind of a fragment language that you could reuse with different uh, architecture language. So I had developed this for the AADL language. I don't know who of you know what this language is, but basically it's a modeling language for embedded systems. And I said to myself, there is also SysML, Marte, so it would be nice if this fragment language could be reused across different architectural languages. But what I didn't think of is that it could also be used for a totally different uh, domain than embedded system, which is a DSL development. And that was uh, his idea when we met, and I thought it was quite, uh, quite interesting, and it led to this work that was quite interesting to do. So basically here, uh, we, we all know that uh, there is a lot of requirements engineering approaches that have been devel uh, developed to help uh, develop better software. And, and the idea is that uh, why not do the, do the same for DSLs? Because when you develop a DSL, you basically have a bunch of, a number of, <coughs> of uh, uh, processes that you go through. You first specify the requirements for your language. You start with, by defining the concepts you need. You design your language, you implement it, and then you test and evaluation. And again, you can ask yourself the same questions as with software. Did I build the, the, the right DSL? In other words, did I build a DSL that meets the needs of my users? And also, on the other hand, did I build uh, the DSL right? In the other words, did I build a, a DSL uh, that meets the requirements of my user? And uh, in, a, in order to be able to answer these questions, you really need to capture your requirements. Uh, in the right way. And uh, what we see is when we see people developing uh, languages, like I've been a member of the AADL committee for many years, and what, if you try to look uh, what are the requirements for the AADL language, all you will find is a small Word document that was written like 10 years ago and actually was never updated, even though now, uh, 10, 10 years after, we have a language that has a third version that has so many new a construct that have been introduced, and you may <clears throat> you, you don't have anywhere a, a specific formalization of why we introduce this concept. So the idea here of having uh, requirements engineering for DSL development is is important. Now this uh, language I had developed for embedded system was based on the what we call the FAA requirements engineering management handbook. So what it is uh, basically is that um, the FAA uh, had commended a study in the industry and in the requirements research to see uh, if the requirements research results were applied by industry or not. And Rockwell Collins in the US uh, developed these reports. They did the study and they found out that basically, even though there's so much good re requirements engineering approaches, almost none of it is, uh, is used in the industry. And they came up with what they call this set of 11 best practice for uh, requirements management. And the advantage of this is that uh, these practice can be adopted uh, incrementally in your process, so that you don't have to break your process, thus to favor its adoption by industry. So what we did is uh, we, in, in, in this language that we call RDAL, Requirements Definition and Analysis, analysis Language, we introduce concepts specifically to, to, uh, to uh, implement this process with models. Okay, and we also added uh, concepts for, for the very good uh, goal-oriented requirements approach that you, can, you find in, in uh, the, uh, the, the literature. But uh, the language itself is not sufficient. You need to couple it to an, uh, uh, an architectural language. In other words, you create requirements, but you want to assign them to components of your architecture so that you can see if your requirements are verified. So we did that with the ADL. And when we started to use that with, uh, with, uh, <coughs> for DSL, we had no language to basically uh, specify the DSL you're developing and how it is used in its environment. And that led to this language that we call the DSSL there. And basically, you have uh, classes that uh, allows you to capture the DSL you want to develop in terms of, uh, of a syntax it has, and also in terms of other entity, entities like the users or the software tools that will make use of this DSL. And what we do here is we have specialization 
of the syntax in terms of implementation, like for example, you can use eCore in EMF, so you have a set of class. You can use also Sirius to define your, your concrete syntax if you're using a visual language. Okay, so to, uh, <coughs> to explain our method, I will use this uh, language, the simple uh, gyro, uh, 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 it was first named Visualino, DSL example. So what it is, it's basically a simple language you see a screenshot here that uh, children can use to program robots. It's similar to uh, Lego, which has a similar language there. And uh, so I will show uh, our approach uh, just uh, by, with, uh, example, with this example. So one uh, of the first practice of the uh, uh, Requirements Engineering Management Handbook is to provide an overview of the system and all the contexts in which uh, the, the language is being used. And this, we do that with our DSSL language. In other words, we can first define on the left here uh, entity types for the, these entities that interact with the description and their interaction points. And then we can instantiate them in some several context language to model the different contexts into which your system, uh, your DSL is going to be used. And then also another practice is to uh, capture your preliminary system goals. So this we do with the RDAL language and we can link a goal to a stakeholders from which it comes and also to rationals and also to, uh, to the DSL that is supposed to, uh, to, to achieve the goal. The next practice is to develop your operational concept. So this is basically just uh, defining the scenario for your, uh, your language. So how are you going to to, to use your language. And for that, we use a third language that is called use case maps. It's actually for a part of the user requirements notation standard. And the nice thing of this is that it allows you to see in a very compact form all your scenarios. You see the entities as square, and along the path is the scenario, and the cross that you see correspond to actions uh, performed but by the entities that confirm, uh, contains the cross. And the nice thing is that you can simulate these things and, and show that, see if your scenarios are consistent. And we've done an exercise, for example, of translating a natural language uh, use case into this language, and we found that there was more than 10 inconsistencies in these use case. So it's quite uh, powerful. The next thing is to also capture your environmental assumptions. So this is also very important. And we do that with requirements here. Uh, that constrain the environment, and we express this as, as OCL. For example, here, uh, a notation is, uh, may have a concrete syntax in English, so you expect, of course, the user to speak English, and you can validate that against your DSSL model here. Okay, and then we can also capture requirements for the system functions. Here you see a set of requirements. These, uh, these yellow uh, circles represent decomposition into sub-requirements. So you go from high-level requirements that you assign to the DSL to decompose to detailed requirements that you actually assign to the package that contains the classes of your DSL. And you can also have traceability of these requirements to the steps of the use case model in which you discover that you need uh, this function. Again, we express these uh, requirements in OCL. We do similar thing for the functional requirements, but also you can assign to this, uh, the concrete syntax. In this case, we choose the, the serious models. And the last, uh, most, I think, uh, interesting part is that to capture non-functional requirements, because very often you can see that some notations may have inconsistencies, like this. This is the notation of the AADL language. If, if you look carefully, you see that you have a virtual bus, virtual processor, abstract that are dash. So this seems to indicate that the dash means abstract or virtual. But on the other hand, you have a thread that is dash and thread group and subprogram group. And for instance, subprogram is not dash and subprogram group is dash. So you have a lot of inconsistency. So you could capture uh, non-functional requirements, attach that to your graphical syntax and verify that you meet best practice, for example, for those of uh, Daniel Moody. Uh, for example. And this forms the base of usability evaluation that uh, Ankitsa will talk about. So now I'll continue so talking about second part of this approach or uh, the usability part. So uh, I developed the Use Me. It's a 
uh, modeling environment or more uh, uh, approach, conceptual pre uh, framework, which uh, support the language engineer uh, to prepare evaluation models and to support usability evaluation of DSL. So uh, we uh, developed the prototype and it can be found on uh, GitHub. So uh, this approach basically uh, when we think about usability, it, we need to define the context. So it starts with the context modeling, continues with the goal modeling. Uh, yes. Okay. So it uh, uh, continues uh, with the goal modeling, which is uh, usually uh, when we think about model driven development, we have uh, approaches, uh, goal modeling approaches. So uh, I express the usability goals as a goal models. Uh, and with this information, we are creating the evaluation model uh, that supports the experimental assessments with real users, which uh, have inside the test models that uh, can be uh, survey model, uh, models, so supporting uh, uh, instruments like questionnaires, uh, or even a heuristics checklist, or uh, we can create the interaction models, which are usually connected with certain uh, tasks that participant uh, will model and cap capture certain kind of events during the uh, interaction with the language under development, after which uh, idea is to, to perform the evaluation execution, to collect the data, and produce the report model. Um, so when we think about uh, usability requirements, what, what makes them different than uh, other uh, requirements is that uh, they, are, they are actually context dependent. So uh, by the latest ISO standards, the usability is actually uh, defined as a quality in use or effect of the software production in the real context of use. But to uh, actually evaluate quality in use, it is uh, influenced with external and internal quality and attributes. So it is influenced by functionalities which are implemented and the uh, other non-functional uh, requirements that can be measured uh, in uh, early phases of development. So uh, here I illustrated with a gyro visual in a example. So when we create the context model, uh, uh, some basic questions we need to answer is who will use the, the product. So we need to create the, the profiles and uh, I define the basic DSL stakeholders as the main expert and user expert evaluators and language engineer. With this approach, we are actually mostly uh, concentrating on end users that are not uh, actually uh, stakeholders included into the development of DSLs. So idea is to use this approach for the DSLs that will be uh, used by uh, a broader population and uh, as DSLs are meant uh, to actually rise the level of, of abstraction and support also non-programmers to actually uh, create applications. Uh, this is uh, when we really need to perform this kind of experimental evaluation. So Gyro or Visulino was found to be a good example because their users are actually the children. Other thing, when we are creating context model, we need to think uh, where the, the the language will be used. So uh, we are creating the uh, technical environment, describing physical environment and social environment where actual interaction will take place. And finally, we need to decide, uh, define how the language will be used. So we need to define the scenarios and use cases uh, for which the, the language is meant to be used. But as we can see, like a lot of this information in context modeling, we can already extract for uh, other approaches, like a requirement engineering approach, where we already define some of, some of this uh, information, maybe not in a, such a detail. And uh, <coughs> as I told, uh, using is creating a goal model where the uh, highest objective is actually to achieve quality in use or usability. And we uh, divide this, uh, uh, our main goal of, of this uh, language into sub-goals for which uh, we are defining the requirements and the met concrete methods 
which we can use to validate these usability requirements. Also, we are connecting with the method, which are the, the functional requirements that actually impact this uh, certain uh, 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 evaluation of this certain usability goal. And this all uh, help us to produce uh, goal models. So this is just a, a first part of evaluation model where we, for instance, in the case of Visulino, uh, make a comparative experiment with the children using the language. And uh, we compared the Visulino or Gyro with another language, Lego. And uh, for that, uh, we decided to measure the effectiveness and satisfaction of, of uh, participants while using the language. So now to go back and try to summarize all of these uh, different languages approaches we did presented. So we, we developed the artifact and basically we created the, the, the part of requirement with the radial. So what is missing in radial? It's missing that, uh, that there is no uh, awareness of the context for which the requirement or a goal is evaluated. So when we are evaluating usability goal it, inside of requirement engineering approach, idea is to, to that this kind of goal is actually described by the use me approach. Where, and in this point, we, we are trans, uh, mapping the information that is already captured uh, in the RADL uh, to the use me. And on the other hand, we are having a DSSL it, that is a language describing architecture of the DSL under the development. So uh, we actually are trying, uh, because our idea is to uh, be able to, uh, to iteratively repeat the evaluations. And that means that uh, the DSL it, uh, during this iteration will change and evolve as well uh, as the requirements. And we can, idea is to reuse the information that we had before, so we don't need you know, further evaluations uh, start from scratch. We can reuse the information, and th uh, this reuse, of course, is dependent on the changes that are performed on the language. Uh, so uh, in the artifact, you can uh, we, we produce an artifact in Eclipse platform. It can be easily downloaded. Uh, for all three platforms, and you have installation of all three languages inside, and there is an example given with the gyro language, so all the model instances that are uh, explained here to understand more, more level of the details. So uh, to conclude, uh, radial approach for embedded system adapt was adapted to the DSL development by replacing ADL with uh, new language for the describing uh, and tracing DSL architecture, DSSL. Uh, further, we provided the mapping between USME and the radial in order to support usability evaluations. And uh, we illustrated this with a gyro DSL example. And uh, we, as uh, we know, there is no requirement engineering approach for DSL development, uh, which takes into consideration usability evaluation, uh, mainly uh, experiments with, with the people. And uh, there are many ideas for future work, but the uh, main thing is to uh, implement the graphical notation for the the tools that uh, for combining uh, languages. Basically, for use me, there already exists implemented uh, visual notation with the series, but with the uh, radial, we just uh, make uh, illustrations, but syntax should be still implemented. Uh, further implementation of view mechanism for the mapping uh, between the radial and use me. And uh, of course, evaluation uh, of this approach with other languages. For instance, the language that we use in this example was a visual. We can also uh, try and see uh, how usable would be to make the same thing using the uh, textual DSLs and uh, for use with the more complex languages. Thank you. <laughs>